want to everybody give Bob and Diane a round of applause. but to preserving the mill to where it is today that we can all share in the heritage of uh, the Bristol mill. And we're, we're, since and we're thrilled that Land Trust has taken it on to preserve it. So That's a blessing. So when you see these uh, uh, dedicated people um, continuing the heritage on this, you, you say to yourself, well, what happens when they're gone? Someone's going to learn this, right? So um, a good friend of mine, Jeff Burns and I, and, and other friends, decided, hey, we've got to learn how to do this. Because when Bob and Stu are gone, who's going to know how to grind the corn in this mill? How to run it? So uh, we, uh, we, we decided that we better start to learn. And we became Bob's apprentice miller. Millers. Over the years, um, the old lady there just uh, had some problems, and recently it's been out of commission for almost a year now. Um, and we're, Wednesday night was it? Wednesday night, we just, or Thursday, we just about had it, Wednesday night, we just about had it going, and another part of the mill, the door that holds the water in, gave way. So we have to repair that before we can, we can uh, uh, grind anymore. So, They'll come soon. I expect within a month we should have it all set to go. So has everybody been to the mill and seen the grinding? So some of this might just be old hat. But here's the mill. It's on Moonstone Beach Road. And it all starts, um, my presentation's really on just the grinding. And I can go off in a bunch of different tangents. But it all starts up at the top of the mill pond, Perryville Mill Pond. It was a hand dug mill pond for the purpose of uh, grinding um, the corn. Um, originally, in 1703, the mill was located just within 50 feet of where the sluice gate is now. Um, but because of the lack of power, they moved the mill down, let's say, half a mile or so, maybe a quarter mile down, down the road to its present position uh, about 120 years later. So that's, it's been in that position since uh, 1823, was it, I believe? So um, at that time, it was probably still a sidewinding mill, like the traditional water wheels that you see. In about the turn of the century, um, a water turbine, a water wheel, it's, um, um, I'll get into it a little bit later, was re replaced the water wheel. Recently, um, the land trust has made other improvements in the site. What we're looking at here is when the water comes down the sluice way, which is just a uh, embankment, uh, a trough that leads the water to the mill. We have what is called a spillway. Right here, we take these pieces of boards out, and the water comes down and hits this, let's say, call it a dam, and it directs the water out through this spillway. And the purpose of that is to clean off all the leaves and, and all the limbs and things that get laid in the sluiceway from the last time we ran it. So once that's once the water's running clean, we put these boards back in, and it runs into the mill, and it fills up the headway. This is the mill itself. This box, this round box, is called a bat. So this is called a horse. And this right here, which holds the uh, corn, is called a shoe. And we have a big hopper that feeds the shoe. And the corn comes down and drops down through the hole to the center of the stone. And it's, and it's distributed, it gets, the shoe gets shaken by what they call a diddle. And uh, I think there's some song with the diddle in it that has to do with this. So um, the diddle turns and shakes the shoe, which drops the corn down the center, and it spins in and uh, starts to grind the corn. So how's it do this? This is called the bedstone. And so you have the bottom stone. It is actually mortared in place. It's fixed. And it's these, they have all these grooves. Our grooves are a little different. This is spiral. The grooves that we have in our present stone are almost straight cut. I'll show you a picture of that. And then you have the runner stone. And this is the one that sits on top. And that's the one that actually spins. And the two of them work together to grind the corn. This is actually the stone in place right now. 
what we did is we lifted it up to clean it out. Um, and if you see these grooves in here, these are the grooves in the top and the bottom. So this is the runner stone and this is the bed stone. If you look way inside, this is the shaft that raises and lowers the stone and actually drives the top stone as well. Um, you asked how do you get that big stone up. Now that stone weighs almost two tons. It's a heavy, heavy stone. So the mill has no electricity at all in it. This is a little crane. It's operated with a screw. And this hoop goes down over the top of the stone. Go back and look at the stones. Um, it's hard to see in this picture, but there's holes in the side. And that hoop goes over the top. Now, this, this stone is inverted right now, but it would be upside down. And you put the pins in on the end of this hoop, and you can lift up the stone, and you can actually spin the stone upside down so you can dress it. Because after a time, that stone will wear out, and you have to redress the stone. So this was, all, this was done in common, common maintenance. So all the mills had this little crane set up inside. And it's not show, believe it or not. We did this the other day, so it works. It's amazing. There's a lot of creaking going on, but it works. So when we're, we've got the stone spinning now, and how do you control it? Well, there's two ways. One, this is a water valve here, and it raises and lowers a bucket inside the water wheel, which exposes more and more of the turbine to spin. So you can control the flow of water this way. But this wheel here raises and lowers the stone. So when you first start off, you want the stone up a little bit to get some momentum going, and then you start to lower it down because you don't want the two stones to touch because you create too much heat and you could burn down the mill. Have you ever heard keep your nose to the grindstone? <laughs> but when you start to smell the burning, you've got to either stop the mill or, or uh, lower the stone or raise the stone. The corn is a lubricant. The corn, they actually, you have to have the corn in there running or the two stones will mash um, and, and could create a fire. So as the grind, as it drops in the center, it, it grinds through and uh, those big cuts break the, break the husks and the cheek, you know, the outer part. And then as it moves out, the, the actual stone surfaces in which you regulate the height, will control the uh, how fine of, um, of a uh, grind. Now, in learning how to grind, it was Bob. You know, would always well, let me let me have a little bit of that, and you squeeze it. It was all feel and smell. And it's all there's no particular instrument that you can sift through to say, hey, it's the right. It's all a matter of experience and. Trying to learn that from Bob and Sue Sherman is, uh, takes time. So I still call ourselves apprentice millers because we still have a lot to learn. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else we have. So the mechanism that turns the mill is this turbine. This is what it, this is the turbine itself. Um, we just replaced the center section right here. It's nice and stainless steel. All this other part rolled cast iron. And so when we first had problems with the mill, we were looking like, is there any owner's manuals on this? When was it put in? How old was it? It was difficult. And so when we took it apart, we're trying to figure out, okay, can we get pieces? Can we, can we find the original um, uh, molds that they could re-pour and get a new section? Because every part on this turbine is <coughs> cast, not like a uh, machine that we do today. So it was very difficult if you didn't have the molds. You, were, you, were, uh, you had to fabricate new, and that's what we did. We refabricated the center section, and that bucket valve that goes inside there, we remanufactured that as well. Um, so uh, um, even the gears were cast, but since then, these all have changed. Nothing better than being there and tasting the uh, Johnny Cakes that are freshly cooked right after the ground. So, so if you want to know more about, just type in how, how does the gristmill work. And there's some great sites, and we plan on having our own YouTube and, and uh, presentations on the web in the future when we got everything put together. But this is a good write-up if you want to learn more about grinding the corn. There's a good write-up on the web there. And uh, just Google how 
tons of gristmill work. Right? Thank you. <laughs>